this is good stuff. Oberman talking about O'Reilly on, on, on his show. They're talking about the difference between NBC, MSNBC, Fox News Channel. He's taking his quotes. And I'm watching it. I'm Keith watching. Oberman's show is on, I believe, at the same time, right? I, I don't even know. They've moved it so many times. It's called Countdown with Keith Oberman on MSNBC, for those of you who don't know. And most of the country, unfortunately, doesn't know. Uh, now, most of the country doesn't know about our show either, so I, I don't say that, that disparagingly. That's not true, Ben. Not yeah. after this weekend. Um, but, uh, but Keith Oberman does a... Does a God bless him. He's not a crazy conservative who has a show. He's not a crusading lefty or Democrat or progressive. He just does an interesting sort of thoughtful show. Sometimes not about politics at all. You know what? Oberman might change the face of the country. I mean, it's really funny. But there's something in there that we'll talk about after you see it that leads me to believe that. And you know, little things have sometimes a very, very large ramifications. Uh, but. We got this clip from uh, crooksandliars.com, so we thought we'd let you tell that, uh, tell you that too. Uh, you Thank can, you, John Amato. All right, now you can hear it obviously on the radio here, and you will be able to see it on the youngturks.com. Here it is. And now a little out of traditional sequence. Countdown's nominee for today's worst person in the world, and Bill <laughs> O'Reilly is at it again. The second time in four shows, whining about cheap shots from MSNBC and NBC. This time he opened his program with it, ostensibly starting with a patronizing update on the health of ABC's Doug Vogt and Bob Woodruff, whom he identified as Woodriss. There was a lot of guff about the code among most in TV news of respect and professional courtesy, but most of what Mr. O'Reilly was saying was his typical obtuse shorthand of bullying and another word starting with bull. As a public service, I'm going to read portions of his remarks and then translate them into what he's actually saying. The bottom line is, as the oldest cliche goes, he can dish it out, but clearly he cannot take it. That is so true, O'Reilly. Yep. Fox News has good relationships with ABC News, CBS News, and generally CNN. That's probably why Fox bought those billboards across the street from CNN headquarters taunting them about ratings or issued that anonymous statement comparing CNN to the Titanic or the one about Ted Turner losing his mind. <laughs> but Talking Points is troubled by the behavior of NBC, which cheap shots Fox News on a regular basis and has been doing so for some time. You know, i got to confess, it, it never occurred to me before, but when we quote your own words back to you about how the Catholic Church was out to get Christmas or how we should let Al-Qaeda attack San Francisco, they must seem like cheap shots. <laughs> ah! There's only a few people doing this, but NBC president Robert Wright allows it to happen. Wright knows exactly what's going on because he's been made aware of it. Maybe he hasn't, Bill. Mr. Wright is the chairman, not the president of NBC, so your postcard of complaint may have gone to the wrong office. <laughs> and by the way, let us leave our bosses out of this, Bill, or I'll have to call yours. And you know how much Satan hates to be disturbed while American Idol is on. <laughs> by the way, I ain't calling Rupert Murdoch the devil, by the way. Now, we understand that NBC has major problems. Its primetime programming is dead last. Its uh, cable operations are ratings failures. In the cable ratings for the year 2005, USA Network, owned by NBC, finished three full places ahead of Fox News. And as to MSNBC, since February of 2005, our respective ratings tell a very interesting story. In what was described today by News Corp as, quote, the money demo, Countdown's ratings are up 34 percent, but O'Reilly's have shriveled by 21 percent. Ah, take that! That is obviously among our new viewers. <laughs> he waves but that him. is no excuse for unprofessional behavior. Oh, unprofessional behavior. <laughs> Unless that is the unprofessional behavior is with one of your women producers on the phone. Oh, oh man! No, you There's didn't! There's no question that the amazing success of Fox News has affected all TV news operations, like bird flu. <laughs> but CNN, for example, <laughs> usually kidding. competes with class, not bitterness. Which is why we at Fox News compared CNN's Paul Azan to an outhouse and a dead muskrat. <laughs> Likewise, we respect ABC and CBS for their work ethic and competitive zeal, especially since David Letterman kicked the crap out of me on CBS earlier this month. <laughs> I love this. But there's something very wrong with NBC, and if it continues, talking points will go into greater detail about the problems uh -oh. besetting that network. Is this that code among most in TV news of respect and professional courtesy you mentioned, Bill, or do we get to that part later? <laughs> we hope Robert Wright will right the situation and believe he has the power to do it, but perhaps we're wrong about Wright. Oh, clever. Bill made it funny. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's out of the loop, or maybe he just doesn't care. Well, he should care. We'll let you know what happens. 
This is Ted Baxter, WJM. <laughs> good night and good news. <laughs> Let me uh, tell you God something, all right? Lord. Oberman just uh. became an American hero. Look, he's been doing good work before, but that's some American hero that stuff. That was wonderful. Because that is not just fun and games, a uh, little ratings competition between Fox News Channel and MSNBC. I'm telling you right now, and I know I, you know, I'm, I go nuts sometimes, but let me tell you something. That has profound uh, effects and consequences. Yep. The reason for that is that is a typical Fox News Channel Bill O'Reilly ploy to intimidate the competition. You better do what we tell you, otherwise we're going to go to your boss, and then we're going to go after your boss, and we're going to make it personal, and we're going to try to get all of you fired. I'm going to uh, punch you in the face and then tell you, you better be professional and not punch back. And you know what? Oberman drew the line there and said, oh, yeah, come and get a piece, bitch, okay? And here's my boss, and here's the actual boss. You go go tell him. And guess what? Uh, my ratings are going up, and yours are going down. And you know why his name, ratings are going up? Because of precisely stuff like this. You go get him, Oberman. You move forward. You go forward. People his get tired of seeing people make fun of the other one just using false, I, I mean, b lies. I mean, at least Keith Oberman... Everything that he said about Bill O'Reilly was true there. Nothing can be contradicted. Nothing nothing will go back to Keith Olbermann to be like, well, that didn't really happen. Everything that Bill O'Reilly spews on his show that is shocking or interesting or funny or anything comes back. It's a bunch of lies. It's a bunch of lies, and he's being called out on it now all the time. People are getting sick of it. How is it possible? I mean, I understand Bill O'Reilly's bullying. I understand what he does, and, and I understand the manipulation and the skilled debate tactics that he exhibits because I'm, I'm constantly impressed with his ability to reframe, as I've said before, to reframe what uh, his opponent has just said right. in a way that suits him. It's a very particular skill. It's not a particular skill one should be proud of if they're interested in the truth, but a skill uh, nonetheless. Um, so, uh, But the fact that Bill O'Reilly... Uh, consistently sort of whines when criticized. I mean, that just, I don't, I didn't, I would be hard pressed to believe that Bill O'Reilly could be that, ha, lack that much self awareness. That a bully could lack, that it, you'd think Bill O'Reilly. That's how bullies are. I understand, but the you. The minute would, you punch him back, they're like, oh, no. No, you're right, you're right, but I would think, just watching O'Reilly, that he would be a guy who would be like, well, we dish it out, and they're coming after it. I say, bring it on. This is a good spirited argument. No way. But not at all. I mean, he no is way. such a tiny little girl. Uh, this is actually O'Reilly put out a statement afterwards, and it basically said this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, this we we got to take the break here. We've got a guest coming up. But uh, this, I'm telling you, here's the most important part of this. Now, after Oberman throws down like this, he must be supported. The person who's going to make a key decision here is actually Rick Kaplan of MSNBC, Oberman's real boss. He must hold. He must hold. He has to support Oberman. If he supports Oberman, we can turn this whole thing around. You heard him. An increase of 34%. Why did that increase happen? He's been, if you've noticed the blogs, if you're up on the Internet and you're watching things, he's been more and more and more critical of the Republicans, of the Bush administration, and doing funny things like that. I mean, that's funny, right? And his ratings have gone up. See, there you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If his ratings keep going up, they're going to have another show like that and another and another. And we're going to have balancing cable news and everything's going to be all right. We've got to take the break. But I would only think I would slightly disagree with you. And I'm, uh, and I'm struck by it every day of the year. And, and uh, you said, you know, why is this significant? It's incredibly significant. I, I, I think it's incredibly wonderful. I'm dubious of its significance. I'm dubious of Bill O'Reilly's significance. I still find it rem remarkable that we have created this world where a show that essentially no one watches, The O'Reilly Factor, has profound influence and, and is now being sort of taken on by a show that even fewer people watch, while people never pay attention to the nightly news, which aggregately is watched by like 24 million people. But, it, Ben, you know why. It's entirely irrelevant because the cable news people are watched by the other news people. I understand. They're in I, every newsroom in the country. I understand. That is important, but it is remarkable these shows should be treated for the insignificant talking head blowhards that they are. All of them should be, and it's remarkable that they're not. And last point before the break, the loofah. That was who, great. Who doesn't love Oberman for that comment? Either a phone sex reference to the producer that Bill O'Reilly had. Oh, you should professional be professional behavior. Professional behavior. Oh, tell me about how you rubbed the loofah all over you. Oh, 
Overman, you rock the world, man. Congratulations. Come back on the Young Turks.